Hi, it's DeWire. Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NBA, Western Conference. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in my opinion, Jamal Murray's torn ACL ends Denver's season. I know Denver had been on a roll until recently. No question about it. Joker arguably should be the MVP this year. No question about it. Aaron Gordon looked great. Looked great in Denver colors. But Jamal Murray is too foundational. Losing a guy like this in mid-April is the kind of blow you cannot come back from. If you had Denver and you were getting great odds, if you had Denver in NBA futures, you need to scramble right now because somebody else is going to win the West. That's just how it is. So, I believe there are only four teams that could win the West right now. The Lakers, if healthy, we'll talk about them, right? The Utah Jazz, the top seed in the conference. The Phoenix Suns, the second seed. And the Los Angeles Clippers, right? Now, let me just say, you are getting simply spectacular odds on the one seed, the Utah Jazz. As of today, you're getting the Jazz at a plus 850. Understand you're getting shorter odds with the Lakers and the Clippers. Think about that. Then the Utah Jazz. I believe the Jazz have to be, and I mean have to be, part of your betting portfolio. I'm not saying the Jazz are the best team in the West. What I am saying is they have veteran leadership at key places, right? Mike Connolly, for example. They have players who are having historical seasons that no one seems to be noticing. Look at Joe Ingles' shooting numbers. They have a defensive stopper, one of the league's premier defensive players right there in the paint, Rudy Gobert. And importantly, because they're the one seed, they're going to have the home court advantage in every series, in the playoffs, in the West. And at home, the Utah Jazz are 24 and 3. Let me repeat that. At home, the Utah Jazz are 24 and 3. So to me, the Jazz right now are completely mispriced. Vegas right now has two other Western teams. The LA teams, Lakers and Clippers, getting shorter odds. You've got to be kidding me. Right? The purpose of this video is to point out that with Denver out of the way, Utah at plus 850 on NBA Futures represents compelling value. Absolutely compelling value. Right? People are talking about how the Brooklyn Nets, their key players, Harden, Kyrie, KD, have barely played together. Right? Well, what I want people to do is to think about the Lakers, folks. How many games has AD played with Drummond, who just got there, right? Isn't Drummond a major addition? Isn't that team going to be out of sorts? Let me also say, too, look at the Lakers, who just got beaten up by my Knicks. And I mean beaten up, right? Look at the Laker record since AD went down. Folks, it's been pedestrian. The Lakers should not be a plus 330. Quite frankly, I don't know how the Lakers beat Utah in Utah. All Utah would have to do 
should the two teams meet in the playoffs is whole serve on their home court, which, again, they've done by winning 24 out of 27 games at home. Let me also say this about the Clippers. Let's face it, they've been underwhelming for years in the playoffs. Whether it's the Blake Griffin Clippers or the Kawhi Leonard Clippers, they faded in the playoffs. They were up three games to one on Denver last year. Denver came roaring back on them. Now, I do think the Clippers have a lot of talent. But again, understand, the Clippers don't have home court. The Utah Jazz do. So what are the Clippers doing going off at a plus 550 to win it all and the Jazz going off at a plus 850 to win it all? How do the Clippers leapfrog the Jazz in terms of futures odds? They shouldn't. <clears throat> Finally, let me close by saying this. I don't expect Phoenix to win the West. I don't. But the odds you're getting on them are simply preposterous. Right? Phoenix right now is the two seed in the West. They have veteran leadership, great veteran leadership, Chris Paul. At point guard, folks, you really can't do better than that. Right? They have Chris Paul at point guard. They have a guy who once scored 70 points in a game, Devin Booker. They have home court over teams like the Lakers, far more continuity than the Lakers. Right? Keep in mind, the Lakers have two superstars who are coming back from injury. There seems to be a little bit of a cover-up with regard to the AD injury. Understand, that's an Achilles injury. The team just signed AD to a long-term deal. Don't you think Laker management right now is thinking about what happened to Kevin Durant in his last game played as a Golden State Warrior? How do you know that AD comes back? and doesn't feel tenderness in that Achilles. That's the kind of thing that would limit his minutes. That's the kind of thing that may have the organization saying, hey, look, if he has a sore Achilles, maybe this year's not ours. Let's dial it back and plan for next year. Right. Let me add, too, I know LeBron is Superman. I know we're looking at LeBron and we're thinking, oh, this guy's going to play forever. That's always the way it seems. Right. I remember years ago looking at Kareem and saying, oh, Kareem is taller than everyone. He's coordinated. He's going to play forever. Dr. J, he's a superstar athlete. He's going to play forever. Then suddenly you're looking at the guy and the guy looks old. Now, LeBron's not quite there yet, even though you know he's having a problem <clears throat> getting his free throws above the low 70% range. Even though, as you look at his numbers, you notice his points per game is down from his career average. Right? Well, my point to you is simply this. LeBron is 36 years old. <clears throat> Looking at the Lakers, there's another 36-year-old on the Lakers, Marc Gasol. When you look at Marc Gasol play, keep in mind, this guy once won Defensive Player of the Year. When you look at Marc Gasol play, Laker Nation, help me out here. Don't even you consider Marc Gasol to be <clears throat> well past his prime. Now, LeBron's hanging in there. Just understand, LeBron's the same age as Marc Gasol. Right? LeBron's an old man. Marc Gasol's an old man. Are you sure that these old men can take out a hungry Utah team? 
right? Because Denver is out, I think that clears the coast somewhat. The Jazz were always an outstanding value at a plus 850. This is a one seed in the West, a plus 850 to win it all. I think it's clear that gamblers here have a locational bias, a regional bias, right? If you're a basketball team from Southern California, oh, we're going to give you short odds, <laughs> right? Makes no sense to me. If you're the one seed with home court and you're 24 and 3 at home up until this point in the season, folks, it's mid April, we're going to make you a plus 850. I think right here with Denver falling out of the mix, you need to throw some money on NBA futures to win it all. On Utah at plus 850 and Phoenix at plus 2,000. Folks, they're compensating you for the risk. You mean to tell me I'm getting a two seed at 20 to one odds? Led by Chris Paul, who really is an MVP candidate? I mean, you gotta be kidding me. You mean I'm getting Devin Booker at 20 to one odds? Folks, I don't care about the history of Phoenix. I care about the team right now. Right now they have Chris Paul. Right now they're the two seed. Right? So I have my doubts about the Lakers. How the Lakers are only laying a plus 350 is amazing to me. Right? With regard to the Clippers... All I could say is they disappointed in the playoffs last year. PG-13 was on the team. Kawhi Leonard was on the team. Now they've added Rage and Rondo. Okay, maybe that helps them get over the hump. Right? But they shouldn't be going off at substantially shorter odds than the Utah Jazz. Again, Utah doesn't have to win a road game in the playoffs to win the conference. And they're 24 and 3 at home. So with Denver out, I think you want to swing for the fences here. Ironically, Vegas is giving you the opportunity to do so. With the 1 and 2 seed in the conference. I think you need to add those bets to your betting portfolio. Utah at plus 850 to win it all, and Phoenix at plus 2,000 to win it all. Understand, if they get to the NBA Finals against Brooklyn, let's say, right? If Brooklyn could figure out how to play defense and get everyone healthy, or Philly, right? If Ben Simmons can figure out how to hit outside shots, Okay, fine. Then at that point, if you're holding, you know, a plus 850, that's eight and a half to one leverage or 20 to one leverage with Phoenix, then you can hedge the play. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.